presentation uh, from the Selective Service System Registration Awareness, Mr. Wadi Yakawa. I hope I said that. Uh, uh, yeah, cool. right. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, How do you say your last name? Yakour. Yakour. Okay. Apologize. Uh, I just got here. They told me I'm running this. This one I can do. Mr. Jacob Daniels. Slides, but my my presentation doesn't follow the slides as much. So they're mainly for your information. Can everybody hear me? Okay. I don't know if I even need this. All right, everyone. Good evening. My name is Wadi Yakur, and I'm the chief of staff of the Selective Service System. On behalf of Director Benton, we appreciate Colonel Hakimi's invitation, and for the Council of Governments having us tonight. Jacob Daniels has distributed packets to you all, and we're happy to answer any questions and provide any sort of assistance. So we've been in Southern California because California has the largest number of selective service non-registrants in the country. And so we're hopeful that we can work with local governments to remedy this problem. The overall registration rate for 18-year-old men in California during the 2018 calendar year was 57%. There were 2, 2, uh, 266,469 men in California who were registered, uh, required to register in 2018, but only about 150,000 of those men registered with Selective Service. In Kern County alone, 7,121 men were required to register in 2018. Uh, only 4,030 of those men registered, representing a 56.6% compliance rate. Virtually all men, including documented and undocumented immigrants, are required to register with Selective Service within 30 days of their 18th birthday. Men can register online at www.sss.gov. They can go to the post office and they can grab a form there and mail it in for free. And if that's not an option for them, they can go to the website again, print out a form, and send it in on their own. Uh, but Selective Service, our, our mission is pretty simple. One, we provide manpower to the United States military in times of national crisis, and we also maintain an alternative service program for conscientious objectors to serve their nations for two years. Although we haven't uh, had to use the selective service in recent years, we remain prepared and vigilant because nobody can predict with it, with, uh, when the next emergency will occur. To that end, we focus heavily on registration efforts, and the reason why we're here is to ask for your help spreading the word about Selective Service registration. You can do that in a couple of ways. You can pass a proclamation recognizing a month as Selective Service Registration Month to promote registration awareness. Usually the director gets involved, we'll fly him down, he'll address the council, we'll sign a proclamation. It's a win-win for everyone. Uh, and you can also raise reg registration awareness for your constituents on social media and through newsletters. Jacob's contact information is included in the packet. Jacob's contact information is included in the packet and he's happy to work with you on language for a proclamation as well as recommended language for newsletters and social media. Although men are required to register within 30 days of their 18th birthday, the law provides a grace period such that men have up until age 26 to register. But once a man turns 26, it's too late and he can't go back. Not only is registration required by law, but men who fail to register by age 26 face a lifetime of adverse consequences. Those who fail to let register are ineligible for federal student aid, they are not allowed to work for federal government, and in 31 states in the U.S., they will not award state financial aid or allow a man to work for a state or local government without a valid selective service number. Those who fail to register by age 26 are also denied job training under the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act. Uh, they are permanently denied the ability to get a security clearance, and for immigrants, the citizenship proceedings are delayed by five years. Further, we are seeing a growing number of private employers, such as FedEx, to require a valid selective service number as a condition of employment due to their involvement with government contracting and logistics. These penalties are in place for a reason. They create an incentive for men to register with selective service in the event their country should, should ever need them. 
If registration numbers drop below 90%, any future military draft will lack fairness and equity. We all know that if a draft is per uh, perceived as unfair and unjust, public approval will disintegrate and military efforts will be undermined. So I ask that you spread the message of registration. For every man who fails to register, less federal funds flow into the state, the county, and your cities. According to numbers put together by our Data Management Center in Chicago in 2017, for every man who seeks federal financial aid but failed to register, the locality misses out on $5,815 per year of federal funds. For every man who seeks federally funded workforce training but failed to register, the locality misses out on $5,255 of federal funds. And as you are all acutely aware, every dollar helps local government and the local economy. As such, we're hopeful that we can work with current Council of Governments to find a way to raise registration awareness. We have a saying at the agency, 45 seconds at sss.gov will save a man 45 years of headache and heartache. So at this point, I'm happy to take any questions you have and also to discuss other ways to get involved, like becoming an SSS local board member. We have a lot of programs, but um, is there any questions from the council? Mr. Yukur, thank you very much for your presentation. I'll ask if there's any members of the board that have any questions. Okay, so it sounds pretty self-explanatory. Thank you very much. It sounds like you covered it. Any uh, questions from members of the public? Okay. All right, seeing none, thank you so much for your presentation. Mr. Hakimi, do you have anything to add? No, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you it. for having Appreciate us. Appreciate you gentlemen being here. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, gentlemen. Okay, so um, we're not scheduled to start until 6.30, correct? And so we'll go ahead and take a break until 6.30, and then we'll come back uh, to reconvene for, the, um, for our regular meeting. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the October 17, 2019 meeting of Current Council of Governments Transportation Planning Policy Committee. The first item on our agenda will be our Pledge of Allegiance. I'm going to ask Council Member Nick Lasinovich from California City to lead us in the pledge. Thank you. <coughs> Salute the flag and begin. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. <clears throat> the next item on our agenda will be roll call. Thank you. Gorilla. B. Smith. Lucinovich. Here. Couch. Here. Scrivener. Here. Melinda Howe. Here. Crump. Here. Cantu. Present. Mauer? Here. Alvarado? Cryer? P. Smith? Here. Polaris? Here. Kiernan? Here. Para? Here. Winsen Reed? Here. And Medin Bliss? Here. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have our public comment portion. This portion of the meeting is reserved for persons to address the committee on any matter not on this agenda, but under the jurisdiction of the committee. Committee members may respond briefly to statements made or questions posed. They may ask a question for clarification, make a referral to staff or factual information, or request staff to report back to the committee at a later meeting. Speakers are limited to two minutes with the authority of the chair to extend the time limit as deemed appropriate for conducting the meeting. So. If uh, I'd ask now if any members of the public would like to make a comment. Okay, seeing none then, we'll move on to our consent agenda. The consent agenda items are listed. Uh, these are items on item, num on, excuse me, under um, item number four, we have A through G. 
So would any member of the public like to make any comments about any of the items on the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, I'll return to the board. Any board member comments or I would uh, entertain a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. So moved. We have a motion and a second. And this is a, is this a voice vote? Or roll call? Is it a roll call vote? Okay, very well. Crump? Aye. Cantu? Aye. Belinda Howe? Aye. Mauer? Aye. P. Smith? Yes. Scrivener? Aye. Couch? Yes. Lucinovid? Aye. Para? Yes. Mendibliss? Yes. Winsenry? Yes. Kiernan? Yes. Polaris? Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Next item on our agenda is item number five. This is a public hearing. This public hearing is for unmet transit needs in Kern County. And I'll ask Ms. Campbell, the Kern Cog staff, to start our discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Prior to making any allocation from the Transportation Development Act, otherwise known as TDA funds, to uses other than public transportation or pedestrian bikeway facilities, Kern Cog is legally required to determine whether unmet transit needs have been identified within its jurisdiction. Through newspaper advertisements, members of the public were requested to provide their input. Public input was also obtained through public hearings held in the cities, the rural communities of Kern and Golden Empire Transits District. Kern Cog's Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed the results of these public hearings. GET held its unmet transit needs public hearing on February 20th of this year. The GET board found that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. Kern Transit held its public hearing on August 20th, 2019. The Kern County Board of Supervisors found that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. City operated transit systems in Kern County held unmet transit need public hearings between February and August of 2019. None of the cities reported unmet transit needs that were reasonable to meet. At its September 11th, 2019 meeting, the Social Services Transportation Advisory Committee reviewed a countywide analysis of unmet transit needs to be provided by Kern Cog staff and determined that there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet within Kern County, conditioned upon the County of Kern and California City reporting the same finding. Kern Cog staff has received the following responses to the unmet transit needs advertisement. The City of Bakersfield, request for transportation of future homeless shelter residents. This request was determined to not be an unmet transit need because it is being made for a future need and not a present need and gets fixed route, get a lift and CTSA provide existing service. As of Monday, Kern Cog, the City of Bakersfield and Kern Transit have reached a tentative agreement whereas Kern Transit will donate two vans to the Homeless Collaborative to meet this need. Request for Kern Transit service from BC to CSUB. Request does not qualify as an unmet transit need as gets fixed route service is available from BC to CSUB and is not reasonable to meet by Kern Transit service. Request for modified service changes to gets fixed route service to Centennial High School. Request is determined to not be an unmet transit need as GET has an existing fixed route ser service that serves Centennial High School. The request is for minor changes in the existing fixed route service and since GET's fixed route buses 61 and 84 both stop at least three quarters of a mile from Centennial High School, this service is currently being met. Request for the formation of a countywide public transit riders committee. Kern Cog already funds two such committees the Social Services Transportation Committee and the Transit Operators Committee. The requester was invited to attend both of these committees. Additionally, any concerns of Kern Transit service may be directed to Kern Transit staff by telephone, email, or regular mail. The requester was also invited to contact Kern COG staff for Kern Transit service requests. Finally, the requester was invited to create their own rider committee and report actions or suggestions to Kern Transit staff or Kern COG staff. And finally, a request for Kern Transit service extension to Edison. This request was determined to be reasonable as Kern Transit already passes through the Edison community. 
Kern Transit staff informed KernCog staff that this request will be addressed in Kern Transit's ne next schedule changes. Service to the Edison community was discontinued many years ago because of low ridership. <coughs> Tonight is a public hearing for fiscal year 2019 to 20's unmet transit needs assessment and determination, at which time KernCog should decide through resolution one of the following. One, there are no unmet transit needs. Or two, there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet. Or three, there are unmet transit needs, including those that are reasonable to meet. At this time, staff recommends that you open the public hearing. Thank you, Ms. Campbell. Uh, before I open the public hearing, I want to recognize that we have some students from Bakersfield College in their political science class. So welcome to all of you. And so at this time, I will open the public hearing. Do we have any public comments? Seeing none, I'll close the hearing and return to the current COG board. Okay. Since there are no unmet transit needs that are reasonable to meet, staff suggests closing the public hearing and finding that there are no unmet transit needs uh, to authorize the chair to sign <coughs> the resolution number 1939. So moved. Second. We'll call vote. Crump? Aye. Cantu? Aye. Alinda Howe? Aye. Polaris? Aye. Mauer? Aye. P. Smith? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Couch? Yes. Lucinovich? Aye. Kara? Yes. Kiernan? Yes. And Mindy Bliss? Yes. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. That takes us to item number six. Um, there are, when I understand, there's no board members meeting reports tonight. <coughs> and so, seeing nothing to the contrary, then we'll move on to item number seven. Caltrans report, please. Hello. Um, I'm going to start with two projects in the Eastern Kern area. Um, the first project is what we call the Walker Pass Thin Blanket Project. And this placed an asphalt concrete or asphalt overlay on six miles of State Route 178 near Walker Pass and on six miles of State U.S. Highway um, 395 near Ridgecrest. Work was completed and the project was accepted on October 7th. Um, the second project we have was on State Route 58 uh, near Boron, and this project removed and re cold claimed uh, the existing pavement and placed a hot mix asphalt overlay along six miles of State Route 58 near Boron. The project's 90% complete, and um, they're finishing final work that includes like profile grinding and finalized work, striping, and whatnot. And Hi, my name is Lorena Mendibles, and I will be also giving a, um, a report of projects for Caltrans. Um, I have about 12 projects. So, uh, Route 46 Conventional Highway, Segment 4A, widens State Route 46 from a two lane to a four lane. To a four lane conventional highway between Lost Hills Road and I 5. Uh, current activities continue um, construction at Main Flood Canal Bridge and constructing. West Side Canal drainage system and roadway excavation. Um, this project completion would be um, June 30th of 2020. Um, next project is State Route 99 Rehab, pavement rehabilitation on State Route 99 in Kern County. Um, this is three miles south of Palm Avenue over across to Beardsley Canal Bridge. Um, work mainly is on the northbound side of State Route 99. Uh, traffic has, has shifted to the inside lanes one and two, and uh, one lane split to southbound direction with the K-Rail. Um, contractor placed K-Rail and started work on replacing the outside lanes on three and four and outside shoulders starting at Palm Avenue over cross going northward. Um, uh, this work will be carried out through the holidays and two retaining walls at Buck Owens and Rosedale Highway intersection are about 60% complete. Um, next project is the Cache Creek Bridge replacement. Uh, this is to replace bridge on State Route 58, eight miles east of Tehachapi from the Sand Canyon overhead. Um, east Bridge demolition was performed between July and August of 2019, and pile installation for eastbound bridge completed was between August 5th and through September 27th. Um, in this month of October, contractor began uh, setting forms to abutments and wing walls. Um, work for the next month is eastbound bridge wing wall and abutments cons construction for this area. Next project is um, 
Summit Bridge Rails. Uh, this was to replace bridge rails on State Route 58 near Tehachapi at Summit Overhead. Um, bridge work began uh, June 19th of 2019 and um, now um, in October 9th, guardrails on Stage 1 were constructed and have been completed. Um, October 10th, we replaced, I mean, we placed chain link fences, have been installed on westbound and eastbound. And work for next month is um, working on stage two of the project, which uh, install more false works and demolition of bridge barrier. Next project is Lurdo Canal median gap closure. Um, Median deck closure near Bakersfield at the Lurdo Canal on State Route 99. We're currently scheduled for the next 30 days, um, subject to change because of weather or equipment, labor availability, or any environmental impacts. Um, traffic was shifted onto the outside shoulders, both northbound and southbound. Medium work behind K rails is proceeding after a slight delay with the central with the canal water leaking into the foundation um, traffic control related updates for this project is nightly closures are anticipated both northbound and southbound during october um, sunday through thursday nights from 6 p.m to 6 a.m and both outside and inside shoulders will remain closed through february 15th of 2020. Um, next project is bell terrace overcrossing uh, construct auxiliary lane and replace bell terrace bridge on state route 99 the approach slabs and concrete barriers of the new south of the new northbound state route 99 to eastbound state route 58 connector bridge were constructed last month and the bridge is complete concrete paving for the ramps on either side of the bridge will be completed in the coming weeks installation of new lighting and metal beam guardrails should begin later in the month um, new connector bridge is expected in, in this month of October and construction of the retaining wall along the outside shoulder of northbound state route 99 continues. Um, the installation of shoring adjacent to the Ming Avenue on ramp was completed in August, allowing the construction of a cast in place construction retaining wall at this location. Um, the concrete paving leading to the new connector bridge is nearing completion and the new connector should open in early mid November. Um, next project is the aqueduct bridge overlay on I-5 and 99 freight corridor it, corridor to improve load rating in Kern County near the Grapevine. Work is complete except for some minor punch list items. Um, my next project is I-599 bridge separation and pavement rehabilitation. Um, this is uh, located in Panama Lane overcrossing. Work currently scheduled is lowering of the lanes and shoulders um, to provide vertical clearance improvement on state, state, bound, um, state Route 99 and Route 5 overcrossing. Um, other works includes excavation and continuously reinforced concrete pavement placement. Um, this project um, is, still, is still being worked on. Okay, my next project is Stockdale Enos Roundabout. Construct roundabout at State Route 43 and Stockdale Highway. The project replaces an existing four-way stop on, with a roundabout at State Route 43, in Enos Lane and Stockdale Highway intersection. The contractor finished paving, uh, which provides access to and from State Route 43 south of Stockdale and has shifted traffic onto the new pavement. State Route 43 access is closed to the north side of Stockdale Highway through the end of the year. Motorists can use Heath Road to travel between Rosedale Highway and Stockdale Highway during the closure. Um, work is progressing on the north half of the roundabout. Drainage systems are being installed as well as curb and gutter. Um, next project, um, State Route 119, 43 intersection improvements to construct a roundabout at intersection at State Route 119 and 43. Traffic switched onto the new roadway section of State Route 119 and closure of existing roadway um, section of State Route 119 southern half. The intersection remains a three-way stop with State Route 43 still closed to through traffic. Roadway work on the, south, so on the southern half of State Route 119 portion of Enos Lane is in progress. Contractor is working on the last quarter of the truck apron on South Lake Southwest Quadrant. Um, 
Gap Closure Rehab, Road of Re Rehabilitation. Um, this is happening in Bakersfield from Route 58 to 99. Separation to Co Cottonwood Road. Uh, eastbound traffic is on left two lanes. Construction should continue for the next four to five months. Lane closures are not expected at this time. Um, State Route 178, construct a uh, rock blanket at Gore areas and maintenance vehicle pullouts. Um, next project is the Cottonwood East Rehab, pavement rehabilitation on State Route 58 in Bakersfield from Cottonwood Road, under crossing to east of State Route 58. This project is in the final stage and is approximately 98% complete. Um, next project is Mojave Maintenance Station. Upgrade facility in Mojave at the Mojave Maintenance Station. Equipment building concrete slab has been poured and cured in process of cutting construction joints in the slab. Um, steel panel and other parts of the building are being shipped to construction site. Progress of crew building, finishing of the framing, shear wall and utility connections um, are being installed. And um, that's it for my report. If you have any questions, um, I can talk to you after. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions Sorry, that from? Was a long one. <laughs> are there any questions from members of the board? Uh, yes, Chairman sir. Scribner, um, I have two questions for Caltrans. Okay. Um, months ago, Council Member Reyna uh, brought up about guardrail for eastbound 46 to southbound 99. I was wondering if you could do a follow up on that. Okay. See, the last time I have been through there, the the existing guardrail was damaged, but uh, I'd like to see it extended, but. And that was on 46? 46, correct. Okay. 46 and 99. Uh, the second item I have is uh, a stoplight modification uh, in Wasco, 46 in Palm, and 46 in Griffith. Uh, I'd like to know what would it take to modify it to have a protected left turn. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Thank Chairman. you. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay. So you know, then we'll move on. <coughs> Thank you for both of our, uh, to both of our Caltrans reps. Uh, moving on then to the executive director's report. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. Uh, I have a handful of items. One may take a little longer, so I will save that one to the end. Uh, September 20th, um, we had a meeting here in the Kern Cog office with Wonderful Corporation, County of Kern, and uh, Caltrans and staff here where uh, I know I've talked about it in before. Wonderful Corporation will be funding and building a pedestrian overcrossing in Lost Hills. At that meeting, we agreed to move uh, the pedestrian overcrossing slightly to the east. It will now be at the go from the east end of the park in Lost Hills over uh, Lost Hills. Previously, we were going to build it very, very close to the intersection. All parties uh, are okay with that decision, and it will work much better for all parties. CTC uh, met on October 9th and 10th. We had staff at the October 9th meeting. The October 10th meeting was a joint meeting with the Air Resources Board. I attended that meeting personally and uh, was also on a panel. It went well. Uh, the San Joaquin Valley Air District is holding a press conference on November 1st. We've already signed up um, Mayor of Wasco, Supervisor Couch. Uh, if you're interested in attending that meeting about Mio Car, please let me know. And finally, um, there was an interregional transportation improvement cr program hearing in Modesto on October 8th, and another similar or identical hearing in the southern part of the state on Oc October 15th. Both meetings were attended by members of Kern Cog staff. And the October 15th meeting, I personally attended along with Mayor Cantu. There's been several articles in the local paper uh, and papers throughout the, um, the state, including Los Angeles and Sacramento. Uh, you, you may have uh, read comment, comments or, or uh, articles that describe Highway 46 project in San Luis Obispo, a Highway 99 project in Tulare, and also a Highway 99 project in Madera being proposed to be deleted. Uh, Kern Cog has made our position crystal clear that we're not in favor of that. Uh, and several of you have uh, indicated that you may want to comment on that tonight. I'll, I'll ask Mayor Cantu if he'd like to add any uh, 
comments and I know Supervisor Couch may also want to talk about this. Okay. Um, well, personally, one of the things that I thought was very difficult for us to, to accept was you know, we went and defended and we voted for SB1 to assist with our roads and the conditions of our roads. And, and then when you find out that they're cutting road projects uh, for the purpose of either one of two things from what we read, um, creating a larger reserve for their budget that they can later on uh, apply or others could apply for more uh, either rail projects or other types of projects that are not road uh, worthy or they're not for specific you know purposes of, of fixing roads or widening roads. Um, that I felt was um, a, a typical um, north and south, let's forget Central Valley move on behalf of the governor's office. And we've experienced that before. I've been in Sacramento many times. And that's usually what we, uh, we end up getting. You know, uh, I let the people, well, we, we discussed uh, that um, at that meeting that unlike uh, some of the Southern California cities or Northern California cities, we only have one major artery that supports our economy in the Central Valley, and that's Highway 99. Um, and along with that, um, if that's our major street that all the other roads tie into, um, uh, especially with all these agrarian communities, Hispanic agrarian communities along the Central Valley, then I feel that there it's a disservice to our communities, Hispanic communities, that this state is not willing to take care of our only freeway that we depend on. Um, we don't have freeways like L.A. or Sa uh, San Francisco. That, that or multiple um, high, wide, uh, large, wide, uh, um, interstate, local, whatever, freeways uh, to support their economies. And so if this is the one we have, we want to take care of it. And we want to make sure that the Sacramento understands that they need to keep funding there for us. Because if they don't do it now, then when will they ever provide the infrastructure for widening 99? And um, the other thing I shared with them, which is very unfortunate, and I, and I made it very clear that uh, I believe the state um, and with the help of Caltrans, they should be looking at lives, saving lives versus putting money on a reserve um, action item or budget item. And I say that because if you were to drive down Lost Hills, which I do every day, uh, you'll see some signs, thanks to the wonderful company that have been posted that say, you know, please drive safely. We've lost 60 lives, have, l has been, have been lost on 46 since 2006. And so when you look at that totality, and the state decides, well, you know what, you know, they don't need the money, and they, they delete the project, uh, that tells me that they're not concerned about what's really happening in Central Valley and how these roads need to be taken care of. And so uh, my concern was that, um, once again, if rail is important for L.A., if it's important for San Francisco, Northern Cal, uh, that's great. Um, but don't forget about the folks in the Central Valley. And, and uh, it's hard not to get frustrated when you see decisions like that being made. And, um, uh, you know, a good, a good example, there was a, 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 an individual there that represented the uh, Los city of Los Angeles, and they presented on their union station and how excited they were. They showed these, these great uh, images of this great union station that's going to be built. And out of her mouth, she said, this is an exciting project for us because it's going to connect us to San Francisco. And, and so, and this is before I got up there, and so I use that as as uh, an, uh, as the caveat to say, well, what about the Central Valley? I mean, no one's saying, hey, this rail system is going to connect us to the Central Valley, which then will connect us to San Francisco. So nobody thinks about the folks in the Central Valley. And so, so um, um, I I want to find ways, and I um, I'm trying to connect with the Cesar Chavez Foundation and other Hispanic organizations because I think it's important, since many of the communities down 99 north of Bakersfield, all the way up through Sacramento and even beyond Red Bluff. Many are Hispanic communities. And so we're taking a direct hit um, by these deletions. And so I'd like to see if we can, uh, I'm going to do whatever I can to get these communities to submit something by November 15th to help uh, support the idea uh, or oppose the idea of removing and deleting these projects. So thank you very much. Thanks, Aaron, for, uh, for allowing us to, to be there and represent our <coughs> valley. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Kanji. Supervisor Couch. Thank you. Aaron, um, I talked to you earlier today, and I just would like to reiterate. Um, a few months ago, we asked all the cities and the county to adopt a resolution in support, uh, essentially saying, 
finish 46. And we got almost all the cities in Kern County to, to adopt that resolution and send a letter on to um, all of our legislators. I think we need to try the, the same effort again, but this time I, mean, I really think it needs to be all 11 cities in Kern County. The county is, I think we're going to have that on our agenda on Tuesday to do that. Do you have sample resolutions, sample letters that you can forward to um, every member here? Yeah, yes, Supervisor Couch. So, so to remind everyone, in April, uh, Kern Cog, Arvin, Kern County, Bakersfield, Delano, Maricopa, Shafter, Wasco, and Atchby all put in writing uh, that finishing 46 wa was their highest priority. And in your packets tonight is, is it in there? a package of articles and um, letters. One from Madera, one from, signed by three state senators. Melissa Hurtado is, is ours. Uh, Senator Galgiani and Caballero also signed on. Senator Grove, a letter that I signed on to from all eight Valley, Central Valley, Cogs, Assembly Member Vince Pong. Assemblymember Cunningham, who represents San Luis Obispo County, and the California Trucking Association. I am also working on a letter directly from Kern Cog, which I will share. But all, all these are are there for your reference. Okay. They're all, all available to use whatever you want from any of those letters. What I'm really looking for is just to make it as simple as possible for all the cities and the county to take a template, um, put it in some, put it on an agenda vote for that and send it off to and who would we send those I, I think it's important that we send them all that you let us know who needs to receive all those sure the, in a separate separate page in your packet is the uh, last page of the draft plan which gives the deadline which uh, Mayor Cantu mentioned is November 15th gives the email also the email address which is OCIP at dot.ca.gov and I will prepare uh, a sample resolution okay. and a uh, and share the letter that I will um, send myself with my signature to all of you within the next uh, week okay. if that works thank you very much very good any other comments does that conclude your report mr. King yes mr. chair that concludes my report thank you any member statements tonight okay seeing none then that will um, will adjourn the meeting of the Kern Council of Governments Transportation Policy Committee, and we'll move on to the agenda for the Kern Council of Governments. The uh, roll call remains the same, and so um, I'll move then on to public comments. Any public comments for this portion? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to our consent agenda. Um, we have items A through E on our consent agenda tonight. Any members of the public have any comments on any of the items on the consent agenda? Okay, seeing none, any members of the board or I'll entertain a, a motion to approve the consent agenda. Motion, motion to approve. Second. Roll call vote, please. Crum. Aye. Cantu. Aye. Uh, Linda Howe. Aye. Mauer. Aye. P. Smith. Aye. Scribner. Aye. Lucinovich. Aye. Polaris? Aye. And Couch? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we don't have any reports for the Transportation Authority, con uh, Congestion Management Agency, or the Motorist Aid Authority on this agenda. Um, any, and I, I'm sure there's no meeting reports, and so we'll move then to the Executive Director's Report, Item 8. Good evening again, Mr. Chairman. Have a handful of items on this agenda I want to publicly thank Caltrans District 6 and 9 bike Bakersfield Golden Empire Transit Cal Vans and Kern Transit for helping man the Kern helping man the Kern Cog Fair booth in September uh, we couldn't have done it without you by you assisting us it, it greatly uh, lightens the load on our employees to man that booth and it also gives you an opportunity to meet with the public we truly appreciate it. I attended a uh, statewide CalCog meeting on September 
24th, where I met with the other 18 uh, COG directors in the state, discussed several issues um, that are brewing between uh, the Trump administration and um, the administration in California regarding air quality, um, environmental impacts that will almost certainly have a, an impact to transportation projects. One of those items uh, was on consent uh, tonight as an information item. We will uh, receive an update next month from the Air District as part of our workshop, which will go into much more detail about that. Uh, September 25th, uh, some of you attended the Regions Rise Together event that I also attended here at the Bakersfield Chamber of Commerce, where several members of the governor's staff uh, met with many local leaders, both elected and uh, appointed leaders. October 1st, uh, I Kern Cog hosted the California State Transportation and Agency Secretary, David Kim, uh, here in our office. Um, our chair Chairman Bob Smith was also part of that meeting. As a reminder, uh, those of you who are interested in attending the Kern County Association of Cities dinner, it is October 28th in Arvin. And as a reminder, several of you have signed up for our joint meeting with SCAG, that's the Metropolitan Planning Organization just to our south, the largest in the country. It will be October 30th at Tohon Ranch headquarters. Currently I have Supervisor Couch, Councilman Crump, um, Mayor Garola, Supervisor Scribner, Councilman Smith, and Councilmember Vallejo signed up. If you'd like to carpool, please let me know. Some of you will be driving direct directly. Uh, Councilman uh, Crump, you'll be driving directly. Uh, let us know so we can get make sure we have enough vehicles. We, we will not fit in one vehicle this time. In, in your folders, uh, I've already gone over the uh, various articles and letters uh, about 46 a few minutes ago. There's a flyer from Mio Car. That's what this um, press event on November 1st is about. A save the date flyer for May 13th to 15th for the annual San Joaquin Valley Policy Conference. It will be held in Bass Lake and registration, early registration just opened today for that event, I believe. Please let me know if you'd like to attend. Caltrans District 9 report on East Kern projects. Kern Cog timeline covering <coughs> October, November, and December. A front page article from the Rosamond News about uh, bike sharing, and I believe it may, ride sharing week, I'm sorry, and I believe it also may <coughs> mention the new electric bus that Kern Transit just received specifically for use in Eastern Kern. Uh, a outreach schedule for the Kern Cog Rural Transit Study. The one page, um, the last page of the 2020 ITIP document, that is the document that is recommending the deletion of the 46 project in San Luis Obispo, 99 project in Tulare, and 99 project in Madera, with the email address and deadline to respond. And our news and events that covers uh, what we've been doing for the last month. And finally, this is a two-page document, front and back, our schedule of cash disbursements from July through September. Subject to any of your questions, Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hikimi. Any questions from members of the board? Okay. Seeing none then, that um, I'm going to ask if there are any member statements. Very well. Okay, that brings us to the conclusion of our agenda. And so, uh, without objection, we are adjourned. The next meeting will be November 21st, 2019. We're adjourned.